Or you can take a banana, I was telling people this today, take a banana and dip it into the hot cocoa dust. It's good. The holiday season means, yes, cocoa, but lots of parties, lots of shopping, lots of booze. There's some holly jolly weird drinking laws to keep in mind this time of year in some states. Jerry, you looked at a lot of these state laws that have to do with alcohol, and some of them are sort of oddball. If I could just go through a few of them yeah. here. First of all, in Ohio, you cannot put jolly old St. Nick right. in an advertisement that has alcohol. Yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, no references to Santa Claus. And a lot of states actually uh, also don't allow you to actually buy alcohol on uh, on Christmas, too. So the 27 idea is, states, right? Yeah, exactly. You're supposed to separate, uh, I guess, the, the religious uh, ceremonies from the alcohol. So. Okay. Is that like the Joe Camel effect that they don't want you, right. uh, you know, enticing youngins? Yeah. With that's the idea Santa? behind it, at least. Yeah, is that if they see Santa, then they might want to, you know, associate alcohol with something like gifts that they want. Uh, but mm. you know, other states don't have that law, and I think that most people would recognize. Uh, at least our argument is, is that that's probably not inducing uh, the twelve-year-old to buy a six-pack necessarily. Another state, Idaho. Mm. They actually raid bars to look for any right. infused, like if you have a, I don't know, raspberry infused yeah. vodka. Yeah. Like you could be hauled off. Yes, yeah, yeah. They actually were doing stings uh, in bars in Idaho for uh, yeah, infusing spirits. So it's like kind of a foundational part of craft cocktails nowadays. You know, might have like vanilla infused vodka, for example, and you're not allowed to do that. Uh, barrel aged cocktails, same thing in Idaho. You're tampering with the alcohol, and they have a law against it. Vermont used to have that law, but then they right. finally did away with it. What was the reason behind having that law? Uh, so the the original idea behind those laws is that they were afraid that people were going to like pour out like a bottle of Grey Goose and then like put in like some like not as nice product in it and try to pass it off to the consumer. What got you onto this story? Yeah, so uh, we study a lot of uh, uh, different alcohol laws because we feel like they hurt, you know, brewers, distillers uh, from kind of expanding and creating the kind of spirits that we all like to enjoy. Um, and, and they create a lot of jobs too. Mm -hmm. So and also consumers, we like creative different products and all these laws just prevent people from doing what's common sense stuff, which mm -hmm. is allowing them to access uh, products. Uh, you talk about brewers and distillers. You, you are with a think tank. Mm -hmm. This was not sponsored by an association. No, 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 no. Yeah, this isn't. There wasn't any like you know interest or like vested interest that uh, that funded our study or anything. It's something that we like to do just from a pre free market perspective, uh, just trying to you know help uh, help brewers and consumers. Uh, I wonder if you thought about because um, our street does try to think about real life and then real policy mm -hmm. solutions, and you know we can all agree there are some common sense things parameters you want to put around intoxicating substances, mm -hmm. you know, free flowing for anybody on yeah. any day in any amount, probably not a great idea. Yeah. How do they strike that balance? Yeah, so what we like to say is that we think there should be, you know, some rational laws around alcohol. There could, uh, you know, be certain safety measures in place to make sure that people aren't getting passed off, you know, dangerous alcohol right. uh, that might hurt them. You see uh, that happen in a lot of really poor countries still. In the Mexico so. resorts, they were having people yep. like go blind. Yeah, and you still see it in like uh, like rural India and stuff, villages where people will be like moonshining and make alcohol in the wrong way and that can be really dangerous so we obviously think that there should be you know limits on that you need to prevent uh, negative uh, externalities like drunk driving and stuff like that sure. obviously that makes a lot of sense but so many of these laws don't do anything that is related to health and safety and uh, they're kind of just these like leftover outdated laws that just kind of hurt uh, hurt uh, entrepreneurs and also consumers for no real benefit so. there there is some realization that some of these are a little outdated, outmoded, maybe just after prohibition was repealed almost 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so now, are there repeals afoot? Yeah, so a lot of these states, uh, these are all laws that have tried to be repealed mm -hmm. uh, in the past, and they've had a lot of trouble in a lot of cases. Indiana's uh, law that says that gas stations can't sell cold beer, for example, they've had a lot of trouble uh, getting rid of that. But the number one law that we highlighted actually uh, that banned Native Americans from distilling on tribal lands, it's actually just about to be repealed by Congress, which is, which is actually happy. It's a, it's a good thing. Always drink responsibly. Remember that. Cheers. We're back in two minutes.